Quinn, I think we're ready to get it kicked off uh, whenever you are. I, I feel like, you know, we've we missed a, a handful of meetings. And I think the participants at this point are those that are focused on uh, being a part of the, uh, the white paper. Um, so I think until we make more noise about the idea that we're working on it, like I think this group is probably what we can expect to, to show up at, uh, at the meeting right now. Okay, that, that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> uh, Alex, do you want to kind of give us an overview of, of where the document stands at the moment and, and where you'd like to take it from here? Sure. Um, so, so first off, as you can see, there hasn't been um, the rate of progress that I've hoped there would have been. Um, I was just explaining to Clint I've had a really busy couple of months and not had enough opportunity to put the focus on it that it needed. But what I've done so far is um, I restructured the doc based on um, what we had uh, agreed previously. So I've created um, placeholders and the the sections that I think we need to to write up. Um, I do have um, I do have notes that cover um, sort of rough rough notes that, that I need to sort of type up that cover uh, sort of pages uh, six to sixteen. Um, and uh, I put in a section around orchestration and the management interfaces starting at page 17, um, which, um, which uh, uh, Xing has, um, has offered to help with as well. Um, and then we need to sort of fill out some examples in, in the block stores and the file systems, et cetera, sections. Um, but hopefully those will become much quicker once we have the, the other terminology sort of nailed out and documented. So what I, what I'd like to, what I'd like to, um, what I'd like to propose is if, if anyone has any sort of, uh, strong, uh, feelings about any of the particular sections or wants to take ownership of any of those sections, now would be a good time to step up. Um, otherwise, I guess Xin and I will continue to work on this now that there's a bit of structure in there. Um, and we'll see where we take this over the next couple of weeks. But I think we probably need to iterate a little faster. So I would suggest if we have two or three volunteers that will work together, maybe we could have a call for half an hour every couple of days and just keep the progress going. Is uh, just a question for the group. Uh, I mean, this is my first time coming back to it in a little bit and seeing how you guys have uh, updated the structure. Do we feel like, uh, I mean, if we're asking for volunteers, I mean, maybe we could get people to, I mean, maybe we could have someone go in and actually highlight sessions that say like, here's where we're looking for a volunteer and have like a comment and get people to sign up that way. Or do you want people to sign up and just you know take sections of it and say I want to work on this? Uh, um, the is, sorry, kind of a, another one follow up is: Are we? Um, do you think we're ready to actually like pare it down at all? Like, is it is it clear that maybe some of what's in here is a nice to have and not important for for the document uh, to be in its first draft? Um, I, I, since the objective of the document is to is to cover the terminology and to cover the layers and to cover the you know get get people familiar with what's possible in the landscape, um, I think broad coverage is probably more important than lots of depth on every point. Mm -hmm. So so I'd rather have I'd rather have um, a broad coverage of all the terminology. And, and even if some of the terms are only defined by a few sentences or a short paragraph, then we can kind of flesh it out and add more detail in phase two or phase three or whatever. Um, but I think broad is probably better than depth at this stage. Um, one, of, one of the things I was going to propose is in the, in the examples um, of file system and block device, et cetera, um, I was going to, Take a first pass at um, putting down some of those, uh, some some of the examples, whether it's you know 
file systems or block devices or object stores or whatever else, um, and even some of the databases. Um, and then maybe reaching out to a broader group to kind of say, hey, you know, Fides is a project, it's a listed database. Do you want to supply two paragraphs to explain what Fides is mm -hmm. uh, and, and how it compares, uh, you know, and, and how it equates to the rest of the terminology that we've talked about around, you know, data protection and consistency and availability and all of those sorts of things. Um, and, and kind of just crowdsourcing the, the examples by asking the maintainers of those examples to actually add that data in. Yeah, yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense to me, your general approach. Um, I, I would be supportive of that. <clears throat> then on the, the first question, uh, in terms of assignment, would you rather go in and, and grab sections of the table of contents and say, hey, like I'm looking for someone to do this part, or do you want people to go in and just grab individual smaller chunks and, and take them? Um, as I said, so so the, the 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 first the first bit, so the attributes of the storage system, the data access interface, and the storage stack and layers. I I do have a bunch of rough notes, which which will mean I can probably get this done um, in a few days or or maybe a week or so, um, and then the. Uh, saying, I don't know, are you still comfortable picking up the orchestration and the management interfaces section? Yes, definitely I can help with that. Awesome. And so do you have the uh, time availability, Jing? Um, I'm sorry? You, uh, do you have enough time available? Um, I'm just wanting to make sure, I know you have a lot of other things going on in your life. Um, uh, you, are you comfortable that you'll have the required time to put a dent in that in the next week or two? Yeah. Okay, great. So I'm in the table of contents right now, Alex, and I'm just trying to make sure I'm, I'm doing this accurately. Yeah. Uh, so I, I highlighted the sections between attributes and ending before the orchestration, and I yeah. assigned it to you, is that, is that accurate? Yep, that works. Then, Does somebody then, want to just present that document so we're all looking at the same thing? Uh, sure. I'll share after the screen. Can you see that? Yep. Cool. Okay. So, so we have the first, the first uh, section covered to me. The second section of path orchestration and management of to Xing. Now, um, with the with the block stores and file systems, I'm thinking that we um, I'll, I'll, we, we just need to come up with a list. I, I can I can come up with the list, and then we can farm out the um, we we can ask you know individual contributors to to add a paragraph to cover theirs. So um, I could reach out to Aaron or Steve at Red Hat to give us something about um, uh, Cluster and Ceph, and I could reach out to um, Basam and give us something about Rook. Um, and um, Yeah, I'm here. And we, can, and we can do, so, sorry, say again. Uh, this is Louise, so I can add some stuff if you need. Oh, excellent, yes. So yeah. we can cover portworks and those things too. So you guys want me to own this section, the block stores and file systems, and then I'll, uh, I'll reach out to folks to get them involved? Yeah, that would be great. Okay. I think, um, <clears throat> and this is a question to the group. Um, my thinking was that it would be very useful to have um, generic statements about fundamental properties of local block stores, you know, remote block stores, etc., cetera, um, and not just have a sort of laundry list of products. Uh, I think it's great to add add the products there um, as, as examples of whatever category of store we're talking about. But I think it's as important or more important perhaps to have the fundamental generic uh, statements about these classes of store. Does that? Yeah, actually, I, actually, I, I completely, uh, I was thinking the same thing just a few minutes ago and, 
and I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, sometimes what my, my concern is, is that as we continue forward and this document becomes a, a live document for every new company that comes in and adds a little section to it. So it becomes like it, it, the sections with the companies become larger than the generic session, that which is showing the reader what, you know, trying to teach them what, what storage is. So that's my concern. So maybe we can, uh, you know, I, I understand that we sometimes need examples. Um, I'm, I'm not, don't know the answer to this. I don't know the, the, the solution, but I do feel that the generic and the uh, methods of how we provide this information to the reader is very important. Com completely, completely agree. And, and, and I think, you know, this is why I opted to have, to document the storage stack and the layers and the access interfaces up front to kind of say, this is what a block, this is what the attributes of a block access interface are, this is what the attributes of a file system access interface are, and the shared file system, et cetera. But then also um, the different layers in that. And, and part of that is about, you know, having local and remote and the different topologies and whether it's sharded or load balanced or all of those things. So that so that when we when we then come to the block section and we say this is local block, we can we can quickly make a reference back and say local block lo local block has these attributes around um, availability, scalability, performance, consistency, durability, etc. And remote block has these things, and distributed block has these things. Um, and then we can give some examples, but we don't have to we don't have to. Um, we don't have to sort of re-explain ourselves each time because a lot of the a lot of the layers are uh, and the terminology remains consistent across all the examples. There. Yeah, sounds great. So I guess the question is, um, how do we flesh out these remaining sections um, as quickly? And uh, I really, really like the the stuff that's in the doc already. I think it's it's the right approach to uh, presenting all of this information. Um, I'm just, as I mentioned in the email to a couple of you, I'm, I'm concerned that, that we're not going to get it done in the next, uh, let's call it four weeks, five weeks. <clears throat> um, and so, yeah, I guess the question is, how do we fill in the missing bits, to, particularly towards the end of the document, which are arguably, I, mean, I think the groundwork that's been laid around terminology and um, the approach to analyzing and presenting these things is very valuable, but ultimately it's the end of the doc that, that, uh, that benefits from all of that. And so, you know, one approach is to take, uh, to, to find volunteers who have specific, uh, expertise in these particular areas. You know, Bassam is perhaps a good example for block stores. Uh, I think Rook was originally designed for Ceph, um, and, and now is supporting other things, but, but find people who, who can talk to the generic sections, uh, before they perhaps go into any particular products or projects. It obviously has the risk that, that people who have a specific block store product or project um, will perhaps be a little biased uh, in how they present the generic information. You know, not not, uh, not uh, intentionally, you know, distorting the truth, but but just they have a particular perspective which is perhaps warped by uh, one particular product. Um, but I think. If we get the right people with the right skill sets, uh, hopefully that will not become a material problem. So I agree with you, and I think that figuring out how to delegate and get other folks involved to help fill this out is going to be important. Um, the, other, the other point I want to bring up is the the things that have been assigned uh, to Alex, me, and Shang. Uh, those are relating to you know the lower level like unstructured block and you know file systems and below that that we don't have assigned is the more structured. So object stores and key value stores and databases. And, you know, if we're going to try to pare this down to actually get it done, unless we have someone stepping up on the call, like right now to, to tackle those last yeah. three, then maybe we should be deferring those for a uh, part B of the doc. What do you need me to do? Uh, well, we need to get someone signing up for other things. So if That's you, what I mean, I'm signing up. So, 
Okay. Put me in one. <laughs> so, Luis, what, what are your? Um, sorry, I'm not. I don't know you well. Uh, what, what is your um, sort of core background? What, what, which areas are you most interested and knowledgeable about? Oh, I've worked uh, at EMC for 13 years at NetApp for three, every had storage for three, and now I work at Portworx. I worked on object store, key value stores, block stores, file systems. So you could put me in wherever you like. <laughs> so, okay. think, so either we, we expand and like tackle more of that structured area and get Lewis, Lewis in there, uh, or we ask him to help on one of the other three sessions that we have those. We, 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 we have an immediate needs for object store and key value store. So if, if you want to take a stab at that, Lewis, that, that would be really helpful. I yeah, do I that. that'd be great. And, and I would personally be comfortable if we defer databases. I mean, it's a big enough area and fairly specialized. And most people know what a database is and roughly what it looks like. Um, so I don't think that area will be as valuable as some of the other, the other two you mentioned. Um, for completeness, we want to do it eventually, but I think it's arguably less valuable than, than the other ones, which people are much more vague about understanding what these things are. Hey, Luis, what's your uh, what's your email just so I can get you assigned here? Uh, Luis at Portworks. Okay. Com. But actually, I'll just take object stores. I'll leave key values to somebody else. Okay. Hmm. I wonder if we can. I wonder if we can. Um, maybe find somebody from the etcd team i was just thinking exactly the same thing and i i happen to have contact with the original author of etcd um a fairly close contact so i i could reach out to him and, and ask him if he could uh, have a stab at that section yeah I mean, etcd is not strictly a key value store um but but i think he has enough solid knowledge of that area to be able to have a good first pass at it. <clears throat> okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so I, I can take that one as a to do. Alex, would you like to have a, a kind of an intro session with him just to um, sort of frame the whole effort and um, make sure that you guys have a common understanding of what the intention of that section is? Definitely, can do that. Yeah, one thing I want to avoid, one particular failure mode I've seen in the past is, is like documents written by committees um, <laughs> where there isn't a, a sort of a lead thinker who's structuring the whole thing because they can, uh, as somebody mentioned earlier, they can end up as a more like a dictionary of products than... than uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and I, I definitely want to take away, I, I definitely don't want this to be a dictionary of products because... Um, uh, this document kind of fell apart this time last year um, as soon as we started trying to work on who's in and who's out and all of that sort of yeah. debate. So, so I, I, you know, lesson learned, we don't want to do that again. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm happy if, 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 say, between Clint, you, me, and Xing, or, and Luis, you know, we keep like editorial control over the document and keep it... Yeah keep it uh, saying, I think we can do a good job. Yeah, I think once, once the guts of it is there, um, you know, we should definitely open it up for comments and, and uh, I'm hoping that we'll get some valuable input and, and many of those will result in changes to the document, I'm sure, um, mm -hmm. but, but somebody needs to keep the general flow and structure sane, otherwise it can be a, a bit of a, a <laughs> throwing stuff against the wall, cool. Excellent. I'm, I'm very comfortable with the way things are moving. If, if we can just uh, be very conscious of time constraints. Um, and as you say, maybe calls a week or something just to keep, keep the momentum going would be very bad. Yeah, uh, I, was, I was just thinking, could we, could we maybe have a call, um, say, Thursday or uh, next week? Mon Monday to Wednesday is bad because there's the O'Reilly velocity on. Um, guys are probably going to be tied up with that bit. If uh, if we can do maybe Thursday anytime works for me. Um, Are you talking about Thursday in a week? Um, as in tomorrow week. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll leave the logistics up to you guys. <clears throat> All right. You want to keep track of that in the top of the doc for now? The meeting? Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's two more sections in here that I don't think we have people signed up for. So there was a storage orchestration and management and the appendix. Oh, actually, that storage orchestration management, that, that needs to go because that's moved up to the top. So um, I'll get rid of that. Sorry. Yeah, that's, the, that's the one that actually got assigned to me, I think. Uh, that, that's that's yeah. correct. It's just there's a, there was a header there which just needs to go. Okay. And then how about the appendix? The appendix was, was something I threw in there, and it was really just generic. Um, algorithms, technologies, etc., that that apply across many of the areas. So it was really a grab bag for stuff that didn't fit cleanly into any other section. Um, it may be that it's already covered elsewhere, or again, perhaps we can defer some of that stuff. Okay. So basically, if someone's working on something and it does end up fitting into the section they're in, then maybe we can just put it in there for now. Yeah, not really. Uh, I, I, I think so. I mean, I, I think. Um, Things like consensus algorithms could well, um, uh, yeah, maybe we can, I did add a bit about cap theorem and consistency, so that's probably covered, but I, I can actually take the appendix. I know, I know a fair amount about all of those, um, and I can do a very, I mean, I'm not going to go, you know, into great detail. I might put a reference to the Paxos paper and the Raft paper. Um, and basically just have a you know three line item for each one of those to is explain the essence of them and how they differ. That, that's, that's a good idea. I think we can also, we can probably move that um, further up the dock into the storage layers. I'll, I'll, I'll move that further up because um, consensus is, is something that's um, common across, you know, object stores and key value stores on databases as well, so. I'll just, wherever the sections lie at the moment, I'll just fill the guts in and then we can easily move things around later, relatively easily. I mean, is that, is that general guidance from everybody here on the call, like as we're filling in these sections that, you know, we don't need to rewrite what's already written in detail, like a few sentences, something meaningful and a link to an established and, you know, credible source that describes a tech is better than trying to rewrite it from scratch. To oh, completely. Yeah. yeah. You know, like I'm not going to, I'm not going to um, rewrite, you know, the definition of rave or something like that. There's, there's enough, you yeah. know, official articles in that already. Okay. I think that the one part that is pretty important is um, being able to sensibly compare some of these things against the properties that we've mentioned. Um, and you know, there may be links to some subsets of those comparisons, but I think at the end of the day, having a consistent, those tables that we provisionally put in there, I don't know what mm -hmm. your feeling is, Alex. Does, does it make sense to continue to plan to fill, fill those in? Yes. What, um, yeah. I was, I was, um, Yeah, I, I was I was kind of going to think about this maybe slightly differently. I, I had another table which I haven't copied in yet to to kind of say um, to make a table based on the layers rather than the attributes because the layers actually define the attributes in most cases. So so. As as I'm as I'm writing down the layers, you, you'll see I've kind of said, for example, um, sorry for all the skipping around, but like um, uh, it's like if a access interface, it defines how we access the storage system, but it also influences availability and performance or scalability in different ways, um, and therefore by saying a local file system or a remote file system implements the data access layer this way, it gives you a better way of showing how to find those, those specific attributes rather than listing out those attributes every single time, because otherwise they become the faithful 
um, for for the various examples. So, so for example, if we just say um, a local file system does this, um, we don't take into consideration some of the other properties which affect those attributes um, because many of these systems are layered. So for example, you know, you, you look at um, an, an RPD device from Ceph, which is a block device, um, and, it's, and you can argue it's a distributed block device, but it's actually based on the Ceph object store mechanism and the availability and the data recovery, the data protection is all down to the layers of Ceph as opposed to the block device itself, for example. But the block device as a data access interface does affect availability in terms of how you move that block device between nodes and the management inter interface for that block device. So I was thinking of defining it in those terms as opposed to just, um, just a, a, a raw table of the attributes. Um, so kind of saying with, with a local file system, these are the layers and this is how it affects the attributes because each one of those layers changes the attributes. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair. Um, the one thing which I thought when I knocked this thing together, and to be clear, those tables I, I bashed out in five minutes, so I, I didn't give any deep thought to them. Um, but what I thought was valuable is, um, you know, I think it's more about distributed versus sharded versus local uh, that, that has pretty fundamental effects on those properties, whichever layer you're talking about. And you're, you're absolutely right. There are different ways of building a distributed block store, um, whether it's on top of an object uh, store or something else. Um, but, you know, once it's distributed, um, it is fundamentally has a set of properties. Um, Correct. Yeah. So maybe, yeah, and, and maybe we're saying the same thing. Um, I, I, I'm very keen to, uh, so, so I think the, the properties of a distributed block store versus, well, yeah, there's maybe two different interesting aspects. The one is, um, by virtue of the interface, um, a block. So, 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 so the, the, the point I was trying to come up with was, it's less about whether it's a distributed object store or a distributed block store or a distributed file system. It's the fact that if it's distributed with, um, with uh, erasure coding, for example, yeah. then there are implications on um, the number of nodes, there are implications on latency, there are implications on, on, on data recovery and all those sorts of things, yeah. which, which, which apply equally, whether it's a file system or a block device or an object store. And then on top of that, you have, for example, the actual interface, which also defines um, how you can, uh, availability in terms of failover or something like that. So for example, if it's a, if it's a if it's a shared file system interface on top of a distributed store, then you just have to move the map points. If it's a, if it's an object store on top of a distributed store, then it's about maybe load balancers or having multiple service access points in terms of for the availability, but not redefining what a distributed store is for each of those different yes. access methods. Makes perfect sense. Cool. <laughs> I added at the top uh, something I wanted to chat about just to make sure we're clear on the timeline if you guys are ready to move on to uh, organizational part of the document. Unless you wanted to tackle more of uh, the content. So the timeline that I put on the top for everybody um, is meetings weekly while using the SWG on the bi-weekly. Uh, if that's what we want to do, there it is. We can we can change it for whatever one wants to do. Uh, and then the other thing to, to chat about is the you know what's the status update? Like which TOC are we targeting to to let them know of, of what status that we have this document? So I think there's three things we got to decide. One, you know, what's the cadence of meeting moving forward? Two, uh, what's the the timeline? So what are our delivery dates? And you know what status should this document be as we get through our timeline? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, the one thing that stands out there is I would really like to distribute this document to this group for comment before we present it to the TOC. Um, I wouldn't, yeah. 
if we have time. <clears throat> I mean, we should we should probably aim to have a draft to the working group for the for the Wednesday, twenty sixth October session, right? That makes sense to me. G give them uh, a week. I mean, it's a bit tight. I would like to give people longer, but but a week or so to give some comments and you know throw their hands up in disgust if they don't want us to present anything to the TOC, which I hope won't happen, and then uh, present the current status to the TOC at that proposed date, which is about from memory about a week and a half, week before uh, KubeCon Shanghai. Yeah, so yeah. we got, uh, it sounds like between the 1026 meeting and the TOC update, it would be two weeks, almost two weeks, a little short of two yeah. weeks. And do we want to move from draft one to draft two within that time? Or do we want to say that we just submitted draft one for comment? Or, you know, where do we want to be? I think the latter would be okay, given the time constraints we have. Okay. So when, so for KubeCon China then, do we want to have a draft or a final? Where should, where should it be by then? Um, I think we should, we should have a final draft as close as right by then. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little hesitant to fall foul of um, not giving people enough time to review and comment uh, and presenting it as final before everyone's had that opportunity. So hmm. I, I would be slightly more comfortable saying this is our draft. It's currently under review. Please, you know, give it some thought and look at it and maybe present the final one in Seattle a month later. Okay. Does so I said draft two at China and final for KubeCon US. Yeah, uh, I mean, my thoughts are that that sounds reasonable, Alex. Yeah, that sounds fine. Yeah, you give it a ch chance for the TSC to get involved if they want to as well, get their feedback and include it and then get the final one out there after China. So I agree with that. Um, I don't know if this helps. I know you're preparing a, um, a presentation for, for the KubeCon China, um, I, I actually sort of presented the, the rough outline of this document to a meetup a couple of weeks back and put, um, put a presentation with a handful of slides together. Um, so I can, I can share that with this group and, you know, we can maybe use that as a starting document for the presentation to, to KubeCon China, if, if you think that helps. That sounds fantastic. Cool. Uh, Xing, are you comfortable being the sort of primary presenter in China? Um, uh, yeah, sure. You'll be there too, right? So it's a yeah. We can we can co-present. Uh, I just yeah. think you're a better presenter than I do, and you certainly have a lot more knowledge in the space. So <laughs> I'll be there as the pointy head TOC member, uh, and you'll be there as the uh, storage expert. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You're comfortable with that. And yeah, it, sure. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, one other uh, comment I had about the document in general is that I think the level of detail in the doc is very uh, good at the moment. Um, I don't think it gets too detailed, but there's, there's quite a lot of kind of meta discussion around options we considered, uh, et cetera, which is valuable, but I think we're going to have to condense this thing into something much more consumable uh, because the vast majority of the audience consuming this, I think, is not going to have the attention span to be able to read a, you know, what looks like it might become a 50 or 60 page document. Um, so I'm thinking that we need either a slide deck, uh, which the majority of people can consume, and I'm thinking 20 slides or something like that, that distills the essence of this stuff, um, and then says, if you want more detail, go to the document. Um, because I think the document in the shape that it's currently panning out is too big for the vast majority of people to consume. Well, it is more like a reference guide, right? They'll just skip to the chapter they're looking for? Yeah, yeah. So we will probably need an executive summary at the beginning of the document uh, or something like that and, and perhaps a slide deck that says if you don't want to read a 50-page document, read this 
twen 10 or 20 slide deck. Yeah, that makes sense. Should we like try to make the, um, the KubeCon China presentation the beginning of that, that effort to condense this information into the slide deck? Yeah, and, and, and possibly even the TOC presentation before that. Okay. So that's about eight days before that, yeah. Cool. Okay. Sounds like we've made some good decisions. Good stuff. Good. Anybody else on the call want to want to step up and take any any more of this document? I think we've got Matt, Brad, Blaine. You guys out there? No. All good. Okay. Can Can I ask you, Clint, to um, perhaps just send a summary of what we just decided um, to the mailing list? Yep. Um, so that those who are not here know that there's progress being made and, and who's doing what and what the timeline is. Um, and then maybe if they have the um, <clears throat> bandwidth, could volunteer as well. So you can solicit volunteers. It seems like we have enough people right now. Yep. Um, so we're not desperately looking for 100 people, but you know, I think it's a uh, good form to at least let people know what's going on and invite them to participate if they want to. Um, I think one of the things that also challenged us in the last round of the, the document just to, to think about last year was people jumping in kind of last minute when things were baked and I know that Alex said we want to have more of a dictatorial control of, of this document. So as I write that email and I say, hey, like get involved, is it fair to say like now is the time to, to step up and like what's the, what's the friendly language to basically say like <laughs> You snooze, you lose. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there, there are different ways of going about it. I'm, I'm quite in favor of having a very limited number of people with edit control over the document. Yeah. Uh, and it sounds like that number is, is like four or so at the moment. Um, and then commentary, we can allow people to comment. And then, you know, their comments may or may not make it into the document. And that's at the discretion of the primary editor. Mm -hmm. But, but have that, you know, transparent and out there so people can make comments and the primary editor can say, thank you, but we've deferred that to the next phase or we're not yeah. on product or whatever the case may be. All right. So like, I guess I could break it up into phases to say, hey, we're looking for contributors right now for the document. And then the timeline dictates that, you know, we're open for commentary from anyone at this time and et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the... You know, the, the scope of the document kind of outlines what we're doing now and what mm -hmm. we're doing later as well. Okay. Uh, I would, I'm not sure what you're thinking is, uh, Alex, but I, I think the document is too premature for commentary at this point. Uh, I think there's just too yeah. much stuff missing. So I would, I would say we close, it's not open for comments, but if you, if you want to volunteer to write uh, one of the sections, please contact Alex. Something like that. Yeah, that works. Cool. And I'll follow up with um, with the intro for the for the uh, key value store. Oh, I think it dropped off. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Thanks, everyone. Yep. Thank you, Alex, for all the great work yeah. here. Yeah. Thank you. No worries. We'll, and we'll catch up on Thursday. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.